Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Honkai Star Rail video, and today we're finally going to do my character guide on Acheron. Uh, I know I've been delaying it a bit, but we're finally going to do it, and I'm actually kind of glad I waited, because it gave me a lot of time to play with her, build her, and really understand her kit well, and I think she's a really important character in this game. I think she's going to be the best DPS in the game for a long time, unless they power creep really heavily, but I feel like this character does fit the mold of an anniversary character in terms of the power creep that they're bringing to the game. Um, I've been using Jing Lu forever as my DPS and Sila, and this character just feels like two, maybe three steps ahead of them, like just an insane amount of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of summarize her kit, explain what she does, we're going to look at her best artifacts, or I guess relics, right? We're going to look at her best relics and her best light cones, right? So without further ado, let's hop in and take a look. So let's start with just what she's doing. Now, if I click on her talent here, you can see it is just like a Bible, like a ton of text. So let me just summarize what she does. So she has a buff that is visible on the screen where her ultimate is, and it stacks up. And the way her ultimate works is, is that normally a character regenerates energy by attacking enemies, or through maybe another character skill or something like that, um, or getting hit. And then when their energy fills up, then they can use the ultimate. Acheron does not use energy, which is unique. So energy regenerate is a stat you don't even want for her, right? Which is normally a really good stat. Um, the way her buff works is anytime the enemy is debuffed, she will gain a stack. Now, the way this works, it's basically per turn, this can happen one time per turn with some exceptions, but pretty much if my ally debuffs the enemy, I get a stack of it. If an enemy off turn gets debuffed, even if it's not by my ally, it'll happen. So for example, they have some stages that are themed around DOTs where maybe I kill a trotter, the trotter will inflict DOTs. When I kill that trotter and inflicts a DOT, she'll still get a stack off of it, which is really good. But the one per turn thing is kind of like if I have a character that's doing like AOE debuffs or multiple debuffs to an enemy at once, she still only gets one stack from it in that instance, right? Which it would maybe be a little bit too busted if you could get more than one. But Akron herself can get multiple stacks on her turn um so we'll kind of talk about that so that's essentially like the really big part of it and then when she goes into her ultimate um she basically does a bunch of consecutive attacks that do a lot of damage right now a couple of things that we have to watch out for with her is the enemies get a debuff called crimson knot so a couple of things are going to happen when the enemies are debuffed um and when your allies attack and debuff them um they're going to get the buff to her that's going to help her ultimate go up right? And then the enemies are also going to get a Crimson Knot stack. Now, kind of the way you want to use Crimson Knot is you kind of want to focus on one enemy to put as many stacks of that on as you can, okay? Um, so let's look at her skill really quick. So what her skill is going to do is when she uses the skill, she gets a stack of Slash Dream. Slash Dream is the buff I was talking about that increases to make her have an ultimate. So she gets a stack of that just for using it. And then it also applies Crimson Knot, which is a debuff. So when you apply Crimson Knot, you get another stack. So that's how you get two stacks in one turn. So basically, if Akron's up and she doesn't have her ultimate, you want to use her skill because it's going to do like three target damage like a destruction character. Um, and you're going to get two stacks to her buff, which is really, really good, right? Um, so that's pretty much what the skill is for. The normal attack, you usually never want to use this with Akron. You usually want to set her up with skill points so that she doesn't have to do that right? But depending on what you have her equipped with, the normal attack could inflict a debuff if you have the right light cone on. Um, so you still could get a stack on the normal if you're desperate, but normally you want to make sure Akron has a skill point unless you know you're going into ultimate, right? Um, her ultimate, which is here, basically, once again, you have nine stacks of that buff. You go into this ultimate mode and you just do a bunch of crazy damage. The really cool thing about her ultimate is she ignores weakness typing, so she can always break no matter what the typing in is, which is really, really good. Um, and you get that at E0, which is great. Now, what happens is, is when she's in this ultimate mode, you want to target the enemy with the highest amount of Crimson Knot stacks. You cannot apply any more stacks of it, but you want to attack the enemy with the highest amount because what happens is, is she will absorb the stacks to increase your damage. And the more Crimson Knots you can absorb, the more damage you're going to do. And just something that happens in general is if you like do an AOE application of Crimson Knot, it's going to just give it to the enemy that has the most, so it won't do it to all of them. And if you destroy an enemy with Crimson Knots, their Crimson Knots will pass to the enemy with the highest amount. So it's a buff that a debuff that's always going to be out there and it's going to transfer between the enemies. And then when you're in the ultimate, once again, I usually try to put it on the boss. 
Um, and then you want to attack that boss or enemy with the most stacks because through this, you're getting more damage by attacking the enemy with the most stacks, okay? So that's the just the general idea of the gameplay with her. So the general idea is inflict debuffs with your characters, support her, let her get into ultimate as quickly as possible, and do Ungabunga damage. That's pretty much the way I would summarize it, right? Now, her technique is really awesome, and it really is going to... If you just want to get her E0 and not even worry about Light Cone, just have a character to save you time, her technique is worth it. Um, what it's going to do is when you have an enemy on the map, you just attack her with it, and it auto-kills them. As long as it's not like a boss-type enemy, um, then it will work. So the type of enemies it won't work on is if it's a boss, if it's enemies guarding a chest, like a rare chest, like you have to fight the enemies, and trotters it also will not work on. But any other like normal type fight, she'll auto kill and it just saves you so much time. You still get the items as if you've done the fight. Um, the biggest time saver I've seen this for is simulated universe. You just go through, you hit them with the field skill, you get your, uh, you get your buff right on the screen, on the map screen, and then you just move on. And it just helps speed up your game so much. Um, the other thing is, is you can still use this on a boss. It just won't auto kill them. But what it's going to do is it's going to start her off with um, a buff. And then the enemies are going to start off with some Crimson Knot right away. So it kind of gives you a head start on everything, right? Now, there is a special buff that she can get called Quadrivalent Ascendance, which they talk about here. Um, there are two ways to get this. One is, is as I just talked about, attacking a boss enemy or some enemy that wouldn't automatically get destroyed on the map. If you use her technique, you'll get that. Um, the other way you can get it is if you have her main buff, that slash dream, if you have that at nine and it's maxed out, you basically can get three overflow stacks of it. So if you're in that and you apply debuffs that normally would add on to it, those extra um, stacks go into quadrivalent ascendant stacks. So you can have up to three of these quadrivalent ascendant stacks from basically over debuffing the enemies when she has her ultimate up. And then what happens is when you attack an enemy, um with the quadrivalent ascendance it will um after using the ultimate and she gets out of it this quadrivalent ascendance will just automatically start the new enemies off with the debuff that gets her uh the crimson knots right so it's gonna basically put it's gonna give you a head start into your next set is essentially what it is so it's okay to over buff over nine then when you're done with the ultimate the enemies are going to start off with crimson knots if you built some of this up so once again you either get that from attacking with the technique or you debuff while she's already at nine stacks. And we'll try to like demo this. I know it might seem confusing. And I know there's a lot of text here. I just kind of wanted to summarize it because it's getting, the game's getting complicated with all of this stuff going on, right? So that's pretty much the summary of what she's doing. Now, I do want to talk about um, a couple of her traces here, right? Um, this part here is what explains what the quadrivalent ascendance is and it stacks up to three times. But this trace on the right called the abyss, this is a super important one to note. So here's what it says. When there are one or two nihility characters other than Akron on the team, damage dealt by Akron's basic skill skill and ultimate increases the 115 or 160% of the original damage respectively. So essentially what this is saying is that if you have Akron at like low dupes, I think E0 or E1, you actually want to run two other Nihility characters with her, which is going to limit your team building, but you definitely want to get this max 160% buff. So if you have a low dupe Akron, you want to run two other Nihility characters with her to make use of that buff. Now, if we look at her Eidolons, and by the way, just ignore, ignore those Eidolons there. I know it's maybe a little bit more than what you guys had seen before, but I believe it's E2. Yes, so if you get her E2, which means you have to have pulled her three times, you get this skill that says the number of nihility characters required for the trace the abyss to get the highest percent which is 160 is reduced by one so essentially if you have her e2 you only have to have her and then one other nihility character on the team and then it opens up your team building to do two non-nihility characters if you want to do that um now if you're already running like kafka and black swan you're good like that's the team you want to run anyways and then throw a healer down that's a great team you don't need to worry about it but if you want more flexible team building um, you might want to uh, get her to E2, but once again, it can be spendy to do that, right? So in terms of team building, you're going to run her with one or two other Nihility characters. If you summon for her, Pela is a great Nihility character they put on the banner. I think Silverwolf is going to be a really popular pick with her as well. Now, while I'm on Eidolons, right? Um, there are some crazy things that we get from these Eidolons. Um, so at Eidolon 1, 
you just get a crit rate up, which is really good. That 18% crit rate is actually super important because the more crit rate you can get from a character like inherently, that's the less you have to put in on relics, which means you can get more crit damage, right? So this is a character where like, if you got her naturally at like 50% crit rate, then this is gonna put up to 68. I feel like if you're in like that 70-ish percent crit rate, that's a pretty nice spot to be. And then you can just load into crit damage and then you're, you're gonna go crazy there, right? I already talked about like this is really gonna make it so that you can have more flexible team building. And then three and five are just like you get more levels on your skills or in your traces. Um, on level four, uh, when the enemy target enters combat, they get ultimate damage vulnerability, increasing the amount of ultimate damage. So it's going to allow you to do more ultimate damage. And then her sixth one is kind of crazy. Um, it increases the all type res penetration for the ultimate damage by 20%. So her ultimate already has a all types resistance penetration. Basic, basically, it's kind of like defense shredding. It allows you to do more damage with any element, right? Um, this is going to add 20% more to that. But the thing that's crazy about this is that this makes it so that your basic skill and your normal skill, so your basic attack and your skill, they're actually considered ultimate damage and they ignore type weakness just like the ultimate does, right? And this is one that I was confused at first. I thought you had to have this to have that at all, but at E0, during your ultimate, you ignore weakness type and you can break, which is amazing. This makes it so every attack she does ignores weakness typing. So essentially it doesn't matter what the enemy weakness is acheron is going to blow up their shields which is amazing right so that's acheron um pretty much the baseline of her kit right so let's go ahead let's go into her best relics and her best light cones i'm gonna hop into the handy dandy data bank here which is right there uh, light cone obviously her own is going to be incredible and this is what you'd want to get if you this is your premium option right the reason why this is good is you get crit damage. Um, you do more damage to enemies with it. So, okay, a couple of things. This gives you more crit damage, but when you attack the enemy, you give them a unique debuff called Mirage Fizzle. This is really good because it just says when you attack the enemy, which means if Akron does a normal attack, like you get in a situation where you didn't manage properly and you don't have a skill point for her, at least you can do her normal. It's still gonna put a debuff on and you're still gonna increase your ultimate stack to get something towards your ultimate, which is good. And then enemies with that debuff take increased damage, which is great. And it further increases your ultimate damage. So everything in here is just so good for Akron, which makes sense. It's her own light cone. Um, when looking at other ones, I mean, any other five stars you might have are probably gonna be pretty good here. Um, so, you know, Welts is probably a solid option. It's a more offensive Nihility one, right? Um, I would say for four star, so then there's like the Kafka one. If you got the premium Kafka one, I would say that one's pretty good. Um, here, let me just go to Nihility because I've got so many things up here. But if we go down here, this Incessant Rain is a very good one. So Silver Wolves. So if you went in and you got Silver Wolf or Kafka's, those would probably be the next two best ones you can use. Um, for four star option, I would say the Good Night Sleep Well one is your best four star option. I would say most veteran players probably have this. So this at least is a nice budget option you can use. It basically just increases your damage on the more debuffs enemies have, which with Akron, your focus is debuffed. So you know the enemies will be de debuffed, you'll get some more damage out of it, but it is like really night and day difference, like how good her five star is compared to this. So it just depends on the type of player you are and how premium you wanna be, how much money you wanna spend on the game. But just know that E0 Akron with this is still gonna be probably the best DPS in the game. So, um, or close to it. So she's still gonna be really good. So don't feel like you have to go all in. But if you, I just like to give the best recommendations in case you're someone that wants to go all in, right? Um, when we go to Relics, we'll hop down here. I think her best one by far is you just wanna go with this one, this Pioneer Diver set here. Um, what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you crit rate up and it's gonna give you crit damage up. Um, to enemies with at least two or three debuffs. So the reason why you wouldn't put this on everybody, because once again, crit rate and crit damage, that's like the best combo for damage dealers. So you might think, well, why wouldn't I put this on any damage dealers? Because not every damage dealer is running, being run on debuff setups. Not every damage dealer does debuffs. So if the enemies aren't constantly debuffed, this gets significantly weaker. With Acheron, this is a safe bet because you're building her around debuffing the enemies. You're, it's safe to say the enemies will always have debuffs. And to get the crit rate and crit damage there, I think is quite good. Um, while we're on the topic of it, we can look at what do we want for the body and the feet. I think you can just go with very standard 
uh, DPS type of thing. So on the body, you want crit rate or crit damage. Depending on what your substats are and how lucky you are on that, if like you get relics with really high crit rate for substats, then you might go crit damage here. Um, if you're getting more crit damage without crit rate, you might need crit damage or crit rate on this. So just go some combo of either crit rate or crit damage, depending on where your character stats lie and what you're kind of gunning for there, right? Like I said, crit rate, I like to be in the at least in the 50 to 70% range for my crit rate. So I know at least half of the time I'm critting, right? And then you just comfortably go into crit damage from that point moving forward. On feet, I think you can go speed or attack percent. I would say... Akron is a character where you could be greedy and go more attack for more damage if you want to. She's not like a must on speed. And the reason why is because your team members or teammates should be debuffing even when she's not taking turns. So as long as you're building up to her ultimate, her ultimate will always interrupt the enemy turn anyway, so speed won't matter there. But where speed does matter is the more turns Akron gets. I mean, her regular skill when built still does crazy damage and she gets two stacks of her ultimate buff instead of one on her own turn so she is going to build up a lot faster if she gets more turns so i think it's going to be your preference and based on your team building but i think either attack or speed i think it's something where if you're just grinding this out randomly and you happen to get one or the other go with that and then you can kind of refine her down the road um, as you build that up right uh, when we go down to the planner ornaments here of course, like the newest one is going to be the best one for her, right? So this uh, Izumo's Megatsu set here is, I think, easily her best one. Um, there are a lot of other suitable options, but the reason why this one's so good, um, you're getting an attack up. Um, but then if another ally on the team follows the same path as the wearer, you get crit rate up. So... The reason why you wouldn't use this on any characters, like most DPS characters are going to be like destruction or hunt, something like that. In a lot of team builds, you're, you're probably not going to be running double destruction or double hunt, right? So with this, with Akron being Nihility, and you know you require at least one to two other Nihility characters on her team to get her effect, you're always carrying somebody else that is of the same class as her. So you're always going to be getting this effect. Now, if you're someone that's running like Jing Lu and Blade, they're destruction buddies. They like to be on the team together. Sure, in that instance, you could give your Blade or Jing Lu this one, and it would probably work good on them. But just know it does limit your team building because then you got to make sure you're always carrying someone of the same typing. Or not typing, class, sorry. So like, if they're Nihility, you got to carry another Nihility. If they're Hunt, you got to carry another Hunt on the team. So this works so good on Akron because, once again, you're getting attack and crit rate, which are two really good stats on her. Um, and you're always going to be carrying another Nihility character, therefore you're always getting the buffs, right? Um, and then on Link Rope, this is one too, where normally you go energy regen rate, but on her, you can safely go attack. She does not need energy regen at all, so make sure you go attack there. And then on the um, Sphere, you go either her element percent or you go attack percent. So you do lightning damage or attack on that to maximize maximize out on that damage all right so with that we're finally going to go to the showcase part so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hop into a forgotten hall fight so let's go into here and yep we'll just hit that and we're going to go ahead i'm not going to do the new one i might actually stream tonight and do that one uh let's go to stage 10 i'll just pick like a moderate stage and we'll just do so this will just be an example right we'll go into this stage one which is wind weakness and we're going to run her which we're going to show that she's always going to have weakness uh breaking even though she's not wind right so let's go ahead and hop in here. All right, so once again, we are going to go ahead and we are going to show off her skill. The cool thing with her skill is if you use it and don't hit anybody, it doesn't actually use it up. So you have to hit an enemy. So if there was a normal enemy, she would hit them and they would get destroyed. This is a boss, so that's not going to happen. But instead, they're going to start with Crimson Knot. We're going to start with a stack of that um, other buff that makes it so that after I use the ultimate, it's going to put Crimson Knot on the enemies, right? So let's go ahead. We'll just open with uh, Sparkle here for support. So in terms of team building, right? If you've got her like E2, you can just run her a Nihility. And then I would run like maybe a Harmony and a Healer, like a Harmony and an Abundance, or you can run a second DPS. Like it really opens it up. But I think Gallagher is like really the best uh, Abundance to use because Gallagher applies debuff. So we're going to attack in here. All right. And then you'll see... Uh, <clears throat> The enemies are going to start by getting hit. They're going to take some 
debuffs, and then we're going to just hop into the fight here. So we'll let them attack through. So notice down in the bottom left, Akron there, she's got her ultimate symbol, but it's got like nine notches on it. So right now, um, she starts, you know, at a high amount. I think she normally starts at five, and then she got one um, for entering with the debuff, right? So that's how she got the sixth one. So she's starting off close to an ultimate right away. So I can start here, and you can see the Crimson Knots are here. That is that symbol with the six above his head. So once again, I want to try to target the enemy with the most and keep them up. And then during the ultimate, I want to attack that enemy. So let's go ahead and hit this here. Okay. And then we're going to do her blast attack, right? And the enemy in the middle, it's not weak to her, but you can see she's weakness breaking the shield anyway. So we're going to hit that. All right. And then 57K there. I want to get some buffs on her. So we're going to get Sparkle to do that. And then I think, sure, let's go ahead and slap the ultimate down right now. So she goes into this, and then you just do a series of attack. You can target who you want to. It should auto-target the enemy with the most Crimson Knots. And you can see there's like a slash through it, because she's going to absorb those. And we're going to build up damage when we absorb those. So let's go ahead and do the damage. So right there, 131k, then 300k. And then we're going to end it off there at about 900k, almost a million damage against that small group, right? pretty dang good and then the trotter afflicted dots which gave her another stack so she's already at three stacks coming out um which is good so now we're gonna go ahead with gallagher i think let's just put a heal down there we'll have silver wolf go ahead and apply a debuff this is gonna add a stack four perfect okay and they're dead so we're on to the second enemy i mean fights go quick when akron's in town right <laughs> akron makes the fights go quite quickly um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and we will, sure, we'll apply that. All right, Akron's at seven. She's going to do this. This is going to put her up to nine. We can just pop into ultimate, 138k there, by the way. We're going to go into ultimate mode here. And then we're just going to go through. Okay, and then 400k to two enemies. Obliterated the monkey, almost killed this one, right? Like her damage is so crazy. And we didn't even have sparkles, you know, this effect really increases the damage too. So like once Sparkle, once she's got both of Sparkle's buffs, like she's putting up really, like I'm putting up well over a million damage on some of these hits, right? Um, I guess we'll just do a normal there. Uh, we got Gallagher's ultimate, which is good. So the reason why Gallagher is a good healer is this ultimate applies debuffs, <laughs> which gives her, and then he gets a special attack that also applies debuffs, which will help. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. Perfect. We'll do this. See, this should increase her stacks as well. Yep, we're up to five. Um, she can blast. And they're dead. <laughs> we didn't even get another one off. So anyways, guys, in short, uh, that's Akron. She's pretty dang good. So let me know what you think of her. Uh, let me know if you pulled for her. I know I'm getting in this out late. Like, her banner is literally about to end. So if you like that showcase and want to pull for her, you don't have much time to do it. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all on the next one.